everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. And today I'm gonna get started working on the Prima eight and a half by eight and a half mini album uh, featuring the Gold Coast collection. So I'm going to start with an eight and a half by eight and a half base album. There is a tutorial to be part of the playlist. I've actually done the tutorial in black paper, but all the instructions and measurements are the same. I've only chosen cream for this particular album, but it is the same album, so don't worry. We're gonna start with the inside cover and the inside page. And I've got my pages trimmed down. And I'll go ahead and give you those dimensions for the pocket. But everything else is pretty much trimmed to fit. And I like to do my albums with a very tight border. So I am using a 1 16th inch. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the measurement of your where you're going to put your mat and you're gonna take an eighth off the top and an eighth off the side, and that'll give you your 1 16th border. So this is eight and a half and by eight and a half to start with, and I've taken one eighth off that measurement, and that's how I came up with this mat. And I'm looking, there's very small print on here, so I just wanna make sure I don't um, put my word upside down and it's very tiny. There it is, it says ocean. So I can read it in this direction, so that's the way I'm gonna lay it down. I did add a very light inking around the edges. I don't always ink on light colored uh, patterns, but I thought it made uh, a, a stronger statement between the cream or the ivory and the paper. But that's really a preference. That's the back side, which is also beautiful. Or was that the side I was gonna put down? Actually, this was the side I was gonna put down. I'm glad I checked. I'm glad you guys were with me on that. Okay, sorry about that. So here's our first page. This is such a beautiful collection. We just got it in. And I guess this collection was put together by Frank Garcia. I'm, I'm actually not quite sure how what his relationship is with Prima, but I know he does design work for them. I don't know if he actually works for Prima. But um, we saw him at CHA, or Creativation this year, and he was promoting this collection and we really liked it. So we have this in our shop. We have 12 by 12, uh, A4, eight by eight, and six by six of the pattern paper. And I wanna let you know that the only of those sizes, the only one that has the gold foil accent is the 12 by 12. So if you like that accent, you're gonna to need to buy the 12 by 12 paper pad. And I mentioned this in the walkthrough, but if you didn't see the walkthrough, the paper comes with six double-sided papers, and there's, five, well, this one has five, but the, um, the 12 by 12 has four of each. Or is it five? Yeah. The 12 by 12 has four of each design. The A4 and eight by eight have five of each design. So you get one more sheet of each of the designs in the smaller form factor. Okay, so I do have a pocket that's gonna go on this page. These are all pocket pages and this is eight and a half. So it's eight and a half by three, and I've scored at a quarter inch and eight. So basically a quarter inch off either side, so you have an eight by three when you're finished. And I'm actually gonna adhere it to this paper before I lay it, I think. I have to turn it around and take a look. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna wrap it around the back here and then lay the whole mat down. And that is page one, which is very simple. And then there's an additional mat that goes here. Okay, so right now I am just looking to get this on installed here. So I'm just gonna run a bead of glue. And I'm using glue here because this is such a small, actually, I forgot. I need to do a bead of glue across the bottom. Otherwise it really won't be a pocket. <laughs> Um, uh, because it's a small flange, I'm just using um, glue instead of uh, tape. I don't have any skinny tape. Okay. 
<sighs> and I'm just making sure I'm going to turn it over. I want to make sure that none of my designer paper is sticking out at the bottom, and it's not. And I'm just going to hold this in place until it dries a little bit. And then the whole mat's going to get placed down here. So I'm going to turn it right side up again. And I'm going to get glue on the, whole, the back of this. I'm doing something different in this album. Um, I'm doing a lot of features directly on the the main mat. Um, and when I say features, I mean the interactive features uh, versus having them attached to the pocket page itself. So I'm actually going to be working outside of the book um, for part of this tutorial. So it's going to look a little different than things I've done in the past um, in terms of the tutorial itself, I need to turn it around so I can see the edges, um, but also even the design. Um, I'm gonna do some more elements that are kind of what, what I would consider, sorry, I gotta start that over, floating. So they're, the flaps are not actually attached to the base pocket page. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open and close that real quick to me, yeah. I just wanna make sure that this pocket isn't binding before I start to burnish it and here it is all right that's in so there's our first couple of pages it's pretty isn't it <laughs> it's very pretty so the other thing I did ahead of time um, was I went ahead and um, put my uh, photo my large photo mats inside the pockets and I just did four of the same I left the back blank for the moment because I want to finish all my layouts and see what paper I have left over before I commit to a design for the back side. But that's what you see hanging out of the pockets here. It's all that. And I'm checking to make sure that this is grabbing on the edge. I think it did. Okay, so our pocket's in. So then the next thing is this piece, and I, it's already inked around the edges, lightly. And this is the inside cover and what I would consider page one. everybody had a good Mother's Day. I surely did. I spent time with my husband and my son. We had a nice day. Okay. So one of the things that you need to be careful if you are inking your edges and you're using cream paper is ink your edges and set your paper aside and let it dry thoroughly so that you're not dragging your ink across your cream paper because it will pick up, it could potentially pick up traces of your ink. So set it aside or hit it with a heat gun, make sure it's set. Um, I inked my stuff last night, set it aside, and so I'm not worried about it today, but it's something to think about. Um, I have been known to drag my, um, or even just shifting it like so, could leave some ink stains behind. So that is our inside cover. And this is page one, and this is a three inch pocket, as I described before. So it's three inches by eight inches. It goes the full width of the paper. And that is the end of page, page one. Okay, when I come back, we're gonna do page two and three. So that's the other thing I'm doing differently, is I'm gonna just do these little videos two pages at a time. So you're getting, um, the two pages that go across from each other. So my next video will cover these two and so on throughout the rest of the book. And then at the end, I like to come back um, and do my cover, spine, and back because they get um, they get a lot of use and a lot of wear and tear would go on the cover um, just as I'm decorating the inside. So the outside is always the last thing I do um, as a rule of thumb even though it's the first thing I want to do. It's the last thing I do just to prevent it from wearing 
um, while I'm working with the album because I'm always turning it upside down and around. So again, that's the inside cover and page one, and that's it for now. I'm gonna come back when I do, we'll, we'll work on page two and three. Thanks for tuning in. This is Daffy from Scrap and Create. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. If you subscribe, you'll be notified of all our new content as soon as it's available. And we really appreciate it when you share. And we hope you consider shopping with us at www.scrapandcreate.com. We do our best to be very competitive in terms of product pricing and shipping. So please take a look at us. Uh, if you haven't before, please consider shopping with us. Thanks for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. I'll be back with page two and three in the next video. Hi everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. I'm back to continue working on the Prima Golden Coast album. And uh, right now we're gonna focus on pages two and three. And I've done some layout and I think I've got everything inked and pretty much trimmed. These are not adhered down. I just wanted you to get a glimpse at where we're headed. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, sit down and um, start pulling these pieces together. I think I've got everything I need, although half the time I get in here and I'm missing something, but I think I've got it all together. So I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna actually start on page two, and this is page three. So I'm gonna set page three aside for a moment. And then um, I had mentioned in my last video that I'm doing things a little bit differently because I've got floating features on the pages, meaning that the, the flaps are not attached to the pocket page itself. I'm actually pulling the page together outside of the book, and then this whole thing will get adhered to the book when I'm finished. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and, and this is just to, to give you a visual of where I'm headed. Here's those beautiful flowers that I showed you in the walkthrough and how I'm planning on using some of them. But like I said, nothing is, is uh, nailed down yet. Um, that was just to give you a glimpse of where I'm headed. Um, so we're gonna start with this page. This is gonna be the base page, or lay right on top of the pocket page itself. And then I've gone ahead and I put a, um, a slit here at the top. And I've got my ruler here. I'll tell you what my measurements are. And I just eyeballed this, and you can do the same, but I'll give you a general idea of what I'm doing. So this is the top flap. It's gonna come down, and it looks like I've, I came in one inch, and then the slit itself is the length of this flap, and this flap is five by four, five by four, and um, so if it's five by four, and we're gonna score at a half inch. So the finished flap is gonna be five by three and a half. Is that right, five by three and a half? Yes, five by three and a half. And that's gonna go up here. And so you're gonna come in about an inch, and then you're gonna make a slit the length of the flap, and in this case, it's five inches. And uh, let me see what I did. Um just under a half inch, but if I had it to do over again, just to keep things simple, I would have come down a half inch. Um, so here's here's what my thought process was. I'll take some of the extra tape off. I had taped some things down so they wouldn't uh, get out of order on me while I was working um, during the design process. So here's my base flap, and here's the thought process behind where this is. I wanted um, this to lay in. So as you can see, it just slips right through that slit. And then I've got this piece, which is the, de the second design feature on this page, and it's an actual card that will open. And it's gonna get layered under this top flap. So here's what I was working on. I wanted to make sure that these flaps laid down but didn't cover up this design element. So that's kind of where I came up with how far to come over I didn't want to cover up this design element or this design element. How far to come over? And then I just want this piece under it staggered and not covering this. So that's kind of where I came from. And I don't have a measurement for this, I eyeballed it. So it, it depends on which paper you use, but if you use the same one, you'll want to position it so this isn't covering part of the uh, seahorse. So that's what my thought process was there. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So like I said, come down about a half an inch, over an inch, and that's a five inch slit. And I'm gonna start by securing that. And I'm going to use tape. To get this to lay down flat. Yeah. So I'm gonna put some tape on the back side. 
This is my, I think, 3 8 inch. And as usual, almost everything that I have scored, if it's a flap and it's attached to something, that's usually a half inch score. So, I'm gonna get some tape on this. Oops, I made that a little too long. Trim that off. Of course, I got in here without a bone folder. It's always something. So I'm just gonna use this real quick. I'm use my pick tool to pull it off. And then I just wanna make sure it looks straight and is going to um, open and close smoothly. And one of the ways you can do that is either by making that slit slightly wider, and then the other thing is to make, or to make sure that you've got your actual score line on the top side, which is what I'm doing, so that it will move freely. Okay, now that's in. And of course this whole thing's gonna get adhered to the book when we're finished. There we go, nice and neat. So that's our first flap. And then here's the card piece that's gonna layer right underneath. And I'm actually going to, I think go ahead and adhere my designer paper so that I don't get them out of order before I attach it to the page. If I wind up with too many papers floating around, I forget what order they go in. Okay, so I'm just gonna use some glue around the edges um, and attach it to this card. And it's a bifold card, and when I'm done attaching my prints to it, I will give you the measurements, and then I'll kind of show you from a drop-down perspective where I'm gonna place it. Okay. And I'm going back and forth with the idea of adhering only three of the four sides um, so that behind the card is actually another pocket, but I haven't decided yet. I'll make that decision as I start to lay it down and then start to figure out, you know, can you actually get something in and out of the pocket without interference? Okay, that's on. And here, I was making use of um, my scraps and I want to show you what I did. So I had two pieces and I put them together and then I just used a piece of tape. So to get the edges to match perfectly, what you want to do is you want to marry your two pieces up first, run your tape, and then trim it together. And that way it'll be perfect on the top and bottom. Now I have to decide the orientation of the pocket opening so that I have my sailboats going in the right direction. And I believe I planned it to go this way so this would open up and this would open down. And of course you can do it the other way. You can have that open and have this open too. But I think I kind of like the idea of it opening away from each other. So this is, I think what I'm planning, what I plan to do, yeah. So now I gotta figure out where exactly I want it. And part of this is getting it away from the nose, the snout of the seahorse. So that's one of my goals. And I think that's gonna do it. And I've mislaid, I think this is what goes here. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down. Oops, my glue is leaking on my on my craft mat here, so I'm gonna do a little cleanup real quick. And just put that on there and here. Okay. So there we go. Okay. Sorry about that. Like I said, I got a little glue floating around. Okay, and now on the top, I had decided to do, here they are, sailboats up here. 
And then this is um, why I had um, split this. Sorry, I've got a little bit of um, tacky tape still stuck on it. Split these apart is I thought it would be fun to have this design on the bottom of this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this since I now know, yeah, that's the way I'm going to install it. And of course you don't have to split it. It could just be, you know, trimmed down to fit the card that you have. Okay. Get my boats going the right direction. Oops, and this one's gonna be a little stickier because I've got that tape. This is such a pretty collection, I really am enjoying it. Um, I know it's a beachy theme, California, and the, all these maps, I'm not happy with it, so I'm moving it over a little bit. Um, but because of the pinks and blue, I, it reminds me of kind of a, of a baby album as well. So I think you could easily, um, you know, you could do a lot of different themes with this one. It doesn't have to be vacation. All right, so these two are going to go together. Did I get this? This one didn't get inked. So I'm going to ink that real quick. There's lots to fussy cut in this collection too if you like to do that. Um, there's shells, there's clusters of roses. You've got these teeny tiny little um, seahorses. I was, I was drawing a blank there for a second. Um, so there's a lot of fun things that you can do with um, the bits. And of course, you could even fussy cut out some of these little sailboats and um, add them as elements on your pages. All right, that's in. Okay, normally on a light collection like this, I don't ink the edges, but the cream was so close to the, the colors on some of the pattern papers that I really felt like I needed to do something to make it pop out. And that's making me notice I didn't even do the base one. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some ink to the edge. And you'll see, you'll start to see pretty quickly what I mean. I mean, I think it shows up much better than say, for example, down here especially against um, a cream background. So I'm gonna ink this up. I'm gonna wave it around a little bit to dry it because I don't like to set ink, fresh ink on my um, working surface because I don't want it to transfer. Okay, wave it around a little bit. And then I've got a decision to make about this location. And I think I'm gonna do this. So. The other, the other thing I was thinking about is whether or not I want this to be a pocket uh, behind the card, which would mean I would only adhere three of the four sides. And I can do that, um, and I think I'm going to. Um, I think I'll put a small tag in here. Not at the moment, but I'll save when I come back and do my embellishments, I think I'll put a tag in there. So in that case, I'm going to adhere three of the four sides. My card is going to open down, and I'm gonna give you those dimensions right now. So this card is seven by five. Seven, seven by five, and you're gonna score right in the middle at three and a half. So when you finish, you've got a three and a half by five card. Same size as above, only this one is fold, a bifold. Okay, and I'm running my bead of glue around the edges. And like I said, I'll put, um, that's a little heavy right there. Um, I'll probably put some kind of a small a tag on the inside. Maybe even something cut out from the ephemera as I haven't decided. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure. I don't want to slide it around once I lay it down because it is going to be a pocket. I don't want the glue to be away from the edges. So I'm just trying to think through where do I want this? 
Okay, and I think that's gonna look good. Okay, now I'm just looking to see that I have an even edge here. And there's lines on here. Basically what I'm doing is I'm pushing it against the card and I'm running this down the length to make sure that that line that I start with is the line that I finish with. And that just tells me I've got this in straight, at least straight with the edge of this. So that makes me happy. So now our next, the next thing we need to do is I'm gonna go ahead and line this, but I'm gonna have to figure out how I'm gonna keep this closed. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and line it with this. I think it's trimmed out for this. Actually doesn't seem like it's quite straight, so bear with me for a moment. Yeah, it doesn't look quite straight, so I'm gonna straighten this up. I've got my trimmer right here, so it should just take a moment. Yeah, I can see right away as soon as I... As soon as I laid it down, I could see it wasn't straight. Yeah, much better. And let's re-ink the edge that I just trimmed off. We'll go ahead and get this in. Okay. Now, um, as soon as I get this done, I have to think about how I'm gonna keep these flaps in place. And um, I was thinking of using um, some twine and doing a bow um, from the top to the bottom. And I think that's probably what I'm gonna do. Okay, that's in. That looks pretty good. Very good. Okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, so that closed, that closed, and then again, uh, somewhere I've got a small, yeah, so that'll, that'll also have a pocket in it. And I'll work on that and fill my pockets later. Right now I just wanna focus on um, getting the main design elements laid down. So I did set aside some string, and so here's what my thought my thoughts were, I think I was thinking about adhering a piece of string uh, back here and then one here, and I can't get a grip. And then tying a bow across the middle here. And yep, here's my second piece of string. So that's what I think I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna mark it about the halfway point. And I'm actually using two different colors of twine, but they're very close. But I thought it might make it even a little more interesting. So I'm just going off this um, hinge here and I'm just gonna tape this down about halfway down. I mean, center of the hinge is what I meant to say, not halfway down. And then I wanna come straight across. I'm using my grid now to help me come straight across, the straight across would be right here, and then attach this one. And then all of this will be um, laid down in the book, so none of this will show. This is the back. When I'm ready to uh, put it into the book, this will just lay right down, like so. And then this becomes what we use to keep this fastened. and free from floating. And so I'm gonna go back and forth using, um, I think, some twine in some cases and magnets in others. And I'm not gonna adhere this to the book just yet because I'm not sure I like the two color twines, but I'm gonna leave it as is for now. And that is basically page two, um, less any of the um, design elements. But while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and start some of that. So the first thing I'm gonna lay down is this piece right here. And this is fussy cut 
from one of the floral pages in the collection. It's not a die cut, it's just the edge of one of the papers and I fussy cut this out and I thought it was really pretty. I'm gonna use that as a design element here <clears throat> because I want it to hang past just <clears throat> as you see. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, <clears throat> got a catch in my throat. So I'm going to, I'm gonna sponge the edges just a little bit. I'm not gonna to be too worried about getting every single piece, but I'm just gonna add a little bit to the edges before I lay it down. And when they're textured and have lots of nooks and crannies like this, it's not that easy. And it can be quite time consuming if you're trying to, to cover every single element. But right now I'm just really focused on getting the broad, broad edge that sticks out toward the side here. All right, I'm gonna get some glue on this and lay it down. I am not gonna adhere the whole thing. I'm gonna focus on the part that's gonna be in the upper corner because I want um, to be able to slide a photo partially behind it when it's all said and done. Now, if you don't care about that, then just glue the whole thing down and your photo would just sit on top of the design element. And that's fine too, it's just different. I kind of like being able to slide stuff slightly behind it. Um, but it's really, really preference. And I'm just, it happened to be the corner of the paper that I cut, so I'm just working off the corner here. There you go. Now, like I said, I can slide my photo underneath it, but if you don't care, if it doesn't matter that much to you, or it's a design element you don't think you're gonna cover very much of anyway, then you can glue the whole thing down. Okay, so that is the beginning of our um, embellishments for this page. Now I've got a stash here of pieces that I wanna use um, that I think are gonna look great together when we're all finished. And I had kind of previously laid it out so you get an idea of where I was headed. So I like all of these colors and I had done a walkthrough with the collection and shared kind of what I was thinking in terms of which flowers we were going to be using um, in this album. Okay, right now I'm just trying to split what's gonna go down here and what's gonna go up here, um, color-wise and size-wise. I like that really light pink. We need something light down here. And I've got a couple more pieces that I can still work with. Okay, I'm starting to like how that's coming together and with what's going where. I definitely want to use this piece. I'm gonna ink it and um, I'm also gonna add some chipboard to it. And I'm only gonna place the chipboard in the center of this element. And the reason is, here it is. The reason I only wanna put something in the center is I wanna be able to tweak the corners and give it some interest. And if you cut out a piece of chipboard that's exactly the size of your element, you can't really, can't really do that. This is chipboard from Prima. Um, their chipboard comes chipboard backed and it turns out that it has a sticker on it. So once I punch out all my elements, I save it and cut it into little pieces and use it as my backing. I actually prefer it over, um, it's not gonna be sticky enough, over um, foam. Not everybody does, but I do. It makes it, it's much more rigid. Okay, let's hold that for a few seconds, make sure it's dry. And the other thing that's a little different about this video for you, for those of you that have watched me, is I don't usually walk you through this process. I usually just show you the finished result. And part of that is because it's very time consuming. And um, one of the reasons I like to keep the videos short, um, one, not to bore you to death, and two, it takes a long time to upload videos. <laughs> so the, the longer the videos get, um, the longer it takes to upload them. So I'm pretty happy with the way that all looks. So I'm gonna reproduce that. And I'm gonna show you another trick that I use. Is I'm gonna take a piece of junk cardstock or scrap, doesn't have to even be the color you're working with, just make sure it's light enough that you can cover it up. And I'm gonna reproduce that on here, glue it on here, trim away as much of this excess as I can, and then I'm gonna use it to lay it down there. 
So why do I do that? Well, I do it for a couple of reasons. One, because I can fuss around and move things around until I'm happy here, and if I pull it off and I tear this piece of um, uh, cardstock, I don't care. If I pull it off here and tear my designer paper, I care. So I, I plan and do a lot on separate from the book, get a feel for the look of it, and then transfer it. Now, a lot of people like to use hot glue here, and it can be quite rewarding and fast, and that would probably be my preference if I didn't care how long my album lasted. If you want your album to last, you really need to use a good adhesive. And um, my experience is that the heat gun glue sticks just don't last. They dry up, they shrink, and then they pull off from the paper. They don't usually tear the paper, but they pull away. So I'm just stacking and layering, stacking and layering to get some interest here. And then I'm gonna add my special handling in here. I think I'm gonna tuck it in just like so, yep. So I'm gonna add some glue to a couple of spots, but not to this edge because I'll probably glue that down on the actual paper. I'm gonna get that leaf on top, so I'm kind of weaving underneath. Everything's still a little damp, so I can slide it around. I'm gonna hold it in place for a few minutes. And then once, once I think it's pretty secure, my next step is I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna start trimming this white cardstock away. And then I can lay it, lay it here, look at it, lay it here, come back and work on it some more. Just holding that in place, trying to wait for it to dry. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cap my glue and I'm gonna start trimming away some of this extra cardstock. Okay. And right now I'm just trying to get rid of the bulk of it, not everything, because I'm not done laying it out, I might need more cardstock space to work with, but I'm, I think I'm pretty close. So what I'm trying to do is get under the edge of the, of the elements, like so. So now you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna have this foundation to glue everything down with, but I'm cutting away everything that you can see on top. That is the goal. Okay, now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna cut this down. There you go. Now you shouldn't be able to see any of your any of the cardstock that you started with. Basically, it should disappear. There you go. So that's why I do that. Just so you know. And let's see, what else do I want to do? I think I want to add maybe one more element. Haven't decided yet. This is where it gets fussy and it's hard um, to demonstrate because I really feel like I need to be right on top of it and that puts the top of my head in your view. So sorry about this, but I'm gonna fuss with this for a few minutes until I'm happy and then um, we'll move on to the next step. And I think I like that. So I'm gonna adhere this rose to the edge of this paper.
The other thing I do, and I did it offline, is once I take the, the flowers out of the packing, a lot of times they're held together with wires or run through the center of them. I generally press them down on something to try to get the wire to, to bend and turn so it'll make the flower a little bit flatter. Um, and the the purpose of that is for adhesion. Um, if there's a point sticking out, it's pretty hard to get it to glue down. It'll want to tip over one way or the other. So just FYI, that is what I do. And I just shifted this over a little bit because I was covering up too much of the S in special handling. And I'm just pressing it into place. And I'm pretty happy with that. Keeping in mind, we're gonna have a nice uh, bow down here too. And that's the other reason why I wanted to get the strings in early is I want to make sure that whatever I do up here doesn't interfere with this um, with this bow or the one down here. So I'm going to go ahead and tie this so I can see where these lines are going to land. Even though, like I said, I might change the color of them of them. And at the end of the day, you can change the placement as long as you haven't glued it into the book too, right? If you want to move your cord over to the left or to the right. Okay. Ah. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm liking that. That's looking pretty good. Let's see, am I happy? Do I want to add any more flowers up here? Yes, no. I have no shortage of flowers, so <laughs> I think I'm happy with the way it is right now. I'm going to go ahead and put it down, knowing that I can always come back and stash some more uh, flowers in there. So I think here is, this is going to be my final location. So I'm going to put some glue on the back of this, like I said, this scrap, um, cardstock and I'm gonna get it I dropped it accidentally get it snugged up to where I want it all right so it's just it's down but I'm gonna come back and I'll probably tack this down but I'm gonna leave it open-ended for now in case I come back and say oh I want to stash another flower here it'll be a lot easier to do if this is an attached to the paper so I will do some additional uh, design work as I flip back through the book. Once I get all the papers laid down and most of the design elements in, it's very often that I come back and go, oh, I just, this has a hole. I need to put something here. This is missing a piece, you know, it just needs a little more oomph. And I often do those, do that with flowers. So there's another example of it that needed something. So this is what it's gonna be. <laughs> Um, but a lot of times these details happen at the very end. Okay, so we're going to work on this a little bit and then we're going to get to the next page. Okay, I'm going to get myself a little piece of cardstock to work on. And I'm going to do it, I'm going to make myself a little square so I don't have to cut so much of it away. Okay, there we go. So I knew I like this pale, pale pink. It's really pretty, really pretty. And I'm just adhering it to the edge. I know I'm gonna trim away the card sock, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put the flower down as close to the edge as possible so I have less trimming to do. So one of the things I know I want to do is to get a flower underneath as well as on top. So I'd like to have a little bit of overlap like that. And I think that's probably pretty close to what I want. Okay, pretty happy with that. I think I need some more color here, but I didn't bring the flowers into this room. So I'm going to come back and work some more on this after I finish um, most of the book. But I do know I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut away this. 
extra cardstock and lay it down so it doesn't get lost. The other reason I like to do it on the cardstock is if I don't feel like I'm in a mood where I can commit, <laughs> you can just shuffle this little piece all over the place until you're happy with the outcome. And I think I like it. And I think I want to pop it. Since there's nothing going to be on top of it, I'm going to add a piece of chipboard to make it stand out just a bit more. The other thing that's nice about the chipboard is it makes it very easy to tuck things behind it, um, like I just did with that leaf. I think this was the, was that the direction I was going? Or was this, this is it. This is it. All right, so I have slight overlap with this and I like that look. When you open it up, you have some floral here, some floral beneath. And we probably need to add something green somewhere. And sometimes I'm not happy with the way this looks because a lot of times, I don't know what the deal is with Primo, but the, the, um, the floral, um, the flora, not the flowers, but the leaves don't always look like they're the right scale. So a lot of times I will trim them down myself to make them look a little bit smaller. Um, and I'm not happy with that. So I'm gonna come back, I'm not gonna fuss with that anymore. I'm gonna come back with a fresh eyes. I'm definitely gonna add some more layers to this. I just don't know what yet. I, I looked at this and I'm not happy with that either. So I think I'll probably go back and get some more of these um, flatter flowers and maybe even a big blue one but I'll come back and do that so essentially this is it for page two so I will walk you through that there's our flap here's our design element here we've got a design element here I'll probably add something to pull these two together but I did definitely wanted to make sure that when I closed it this this worked together and I like it and then this opens and closes and remember we've got room for um, a tag in here. Now, one of the things I want to point out that I just did, and I should have thought this through, is this is a very tall flower, and this flap goes down. It's still okay, but not ideal. So a flatter flower here would have been probably a better solution, or even a fussy cut flower from the collection. So that is the end of page two. I am going to tie this up. I'm not going to glue it to the book, because I think I am going to change the twine. Uh, but you'll understand, you can see how it actually goes together. In this light, you can't tell, but they are two different colors. And I am going to prep everything and get ready for the page three. Okay, now we're on to page three. So here's what our finished um, project or result is going to be. And um, I've got everything kind of laid out. So we're I'm going to go over the sizes as we're constructing. So um, this is um, just a simple flap. And this flap is what's going to house the um, magnet. So there's a magnet in here. And its opposing magnet is going to wind up being actually under this, um, under this piece of paper. So let me sit down and we'll get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is get this little strip put together. Again, everything's taped together, so I didn't lose track of where things were going to go. So I'll pull off my temporary tape. Normally, I do all this with paper clips, but I found that paper clips leave an ugly mark on my cream paper. So I use temporary tape this time. This is a cut apart, and it is going to be the feature of this page. So it'll be center and front. And it's going on top of um, a piece of cream card stock, and I'll tell you the dimensions. It's eight and a half, eight and a half by three and one eighth, three and one eighth by eight and a half, score at four and a quarter. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get my top piece put down. So 
So eight and a half by three and one eighth, score at four and a quarter on the eight and a half side. So it's just a simple card when you're finished. And I chose a cut apart. You could use any design element. It doesn't have to be this size. You could use something bigger or smaller. Um, but I just like the way it looked uh, layered on the paper. So that's on. Okay. So now that that's done, I'm going to set this aside temporarily. And I'm going to come back to this small flap. And I'll give you the measurements. This um, gold heart is part of the ephemera collection. And so is this little pink heart. So I've layered the gold heart on top of cream cardstock on top of just a piece of scrap uh, from the design collection, which is gonna get layered on yet one more piece of cardstock. So the final cardstock that I'm using as a swing hinge is three and a half, three and a half by one and one eighth. And those dimensions aren't special. There's nothing magic about them, it just made since when I laid this, I, I measured everything based on this little piece of ephemera that I'm using. So if you use something else, you know, it could be bigger or smaller. I forgot I had tape here. So the key thing to remember here is this is a functioning swing hinge. So you have to get your magnet on one end of it. And it's going to hold the rest of the design elements in place. So I'm going to get a little glue on here. So I've got a chance to wiggle it into place and um, so in addition to having this ephemera on white cardstock I, I popped it with chipboard behind it and then the designer paper so you have this nice layered look which I like and it also feels nice and strong because there's so many layers okay so that's it that's together. I think, yeah, I was going to say, I think I glued the heart down. I did. And the other pieces I just glued down in advance, but it would have just, you would have just seen me laying layer after layer after layer. So the critical thing to remember here is to get that magnet underneath um, between your cardstock and your designer paper. And I'm not going to adhere it to this page until I get this done because um, I have to decide exactly where this is going so that I can put the opposing mag magnet in the right spot. And I think the magnet's gonna go behind this sheet, but I'm hesitating because it's gonna have to go through several layers of cardstock. If I can um, adhere it to the back of this, that's what I'd like to do. But if I try to and it won't hold, it may actually wind up being adhered to um, one of the design elements on the top side. So I'm not prepared to do that just yet. So let's go ahead and get this flap done. So this flap is three and three quarters by eight. Three and three quarters by eight, score at three and a quarter. Is that right? Yes, it is, three and a quarter. And this design element's gonna go right on top. And in the last video, I spent some time laying out some of the flowers. I'll probably come back and add some embellishments to this page too, but I'll kind of keep it simple because this is kind of like the design embellishment piece right here is this little piece, this badge, so to speak. So I might not do too much with the flowers. It depends. After I get everything laid down, I'll see what it looks like. Oops, I got a piece of tape still. All right, so this will be adhered like so. This is going to be attached directly to this flap. So these two pieces, when you open the skinny flap, it'll bring the card with it. And then this is gonna reach over and be the hinge. So I've got a magnet back here and it's going to be what's used to keep everything in place. So now I have to find my mate, which I don't know what I did with it. I had a mag, oh, here it is. I had it temporarily in here. So I'm gonna try to get it 
to go through all the layers. I'm gonna try that right now and see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna temporarily tape that down. And this is just removable tape. Hold that in place. And now I'm gonna start laying my, putting my layers on top and see if it'll actually go and hold. Okay, so far so good. But I know that I'm gonna have at least one more piece of cardstock inside here. So I'm going to temporarily place this here, here, and let's see. And you know what, I think it's gonna hold, so that's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and place that magnet on the back permanently. That's great, I'm surprised. <laughs> and, and then based on where that magnet is, I, as long as this card lays over it, we'll be okay. All right, that's great news. But I'm, hopefully you understood what I was doing there. Um, so I was making sure that it would get through this piece of cardstock, this piece of cream cardstock, the back, and yet one more piece, which would be another designer piece layered here, and that the magnet would be able to travel through all of those layers and still have enough strength to hold it closed, and it did. So that was just kind of a test run. So now that I know that it works, I can figure out where I want this to be visually, and then just put the magnet on the back side of it under the paper. So I'm just putting everything together quickly and trying to decide where this is gonna fall. And um, what I'm looking for is, what's it gonna cover? Is it gonna cover these words, or the balloon, or these guys down here? And I think what I wanna do is the Grand Hotel James. I like the way that looks, so I'd like for I'd like for that to be exposed. And there's my magnet, so I'm just trying to make sure it's actually gonna go over the card far enough. And I think it will, and then the way I'm placing this is I, I want this piece to be above this little building here, just because I think visually it's, it's better looking. So that's, when I get done gluing everything down, that's what it's gonna look like. So I think I'm good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and put this magnet on the back, tape it down and adhere the, um, this, this little swing hinge that I, that I have. So I'm holding it carefully in place, carefully, carefully. There we go. Make sure it still looks straight. I'm shifting it up and down, trying to make sure it's straight before I glue the um, flap down. And my eyes are playing tricks on me with all the shiny. But I think that looks pretty good, but one way to be sure. Am I holding the line? I am. It's straight. So now I feel like we can stick that down. And I'm gonna do it with tape. If I can find the end of it, there it is. check it one more time before I stick it down because I know I'm shifting it yeah a little bit
I don't know if it shifted a little, but I think it's pretty darn close. Okay, so now this is going to go on here. Now, I am I could attach it to this page, but I really don't want to. I want to attach the flap to the pocket page. And then... Um, and then lay this on top. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna go to the book now. So we're on page three. There's the inside cover, page one. Here's page two, which I'm not ready to glue down and that's because of this bow, um, but it's finished other than that. This is um, page three. And so this is the flap that's actually gonna get installed right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then add my mat. So let's get some tape on here. And um, this is really different than how I normally construct. So I'm, I'm interested in some feedback. I think some people are gonna like it, some people are gonna hate it, and I'm okay with that. Um, but just let me know so I, um, I think what's good about um, this process is you get to actually see what, what my mind's doing when I'm thinking about layouts and uh, designing. Um, it's not very smooth from a pure construction process. You know, it's not insert tab A into slot B, which is what my videos are normally like. This, this walks you a little bit more through the actual thought design process. So I'm marrying up the corner of this flap with the corner of the page. And what you see sticking out here is just the insert from the pocket. Um, And I'm just trying to make it go flush with the page and it's not. There we go. All right, so that's in. And now I'm gonna lay this down. Make sure my magnet's in place. And it is, but you know what? I realize it's not taped down, so I should do that. So I wanna nice wide piece of tape uh, just to soften the edges because it will show through. The lighter the collection, uh, the more likely your magnet's gonna show through. So use some tape, on, even if it's scotch tape, go over the edge, it'll, it'll smooth it out. Okay. This is gonna go here. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside since it's free floating. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna adhere this piece. We're gonna make sure that it gets installed far enough over that the magnet lands on top and that the, the word Grand Hotel James is, is fully exposed. And I'm liking that right there. So I'm just, I'm gonna put a little, let's see, glue on this half inch strip is what it looks like. And I'm, I'm being very light on the glue. And the reason for that is I'm gonna come back through and line this. And then I'm also gonna, because it's gonna be exposed, put some designer paper here and I wanna be able to slide it slightly behind this flap. Oh, I got something yucky on there. I'll have to clean that up. Okay, so back to this, we wanna be below the words and make sure that we get behind this magnet And I think that's gonna do it. I'm gonna lift that up. And then I'm just gonna see if it's how it's doing to the bottom of the page. Make sure it's kind of square. It looks pretty good. All right, so that is on. So that is now adhered directly to this flap. Give that a second to dry. So the way this mechanism will work is you'll open that, and I'll line the back of this as well. You'll open this, this will be lined, this will be lined, but you'll have all this as photo space. So that is the end of page two. 
And I still have to glue this down, but I'm gonna wait and do that um, offline. But at least you get to see what page two, and then I'm gonna adhere this, or that's page three, I'm sorry, page two and page three. And that's what I've, that's what we've got so far. All right, so I'll be back. I'm gonna keep working on it. I've got the layouts for three and or for four and five. They're ready to go um, for me to install, but I just don't have them done yet. Oh, you know what I just remembered? I'll have to come back with another video to show you. I, I actually had a different design idea for um, the inside of this, and I just remembered I fussy cut this, which I wanted to put on here so that we could pop some of the buildings out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that as well, but I'll do that in the next video. There's one more design element um, that I didn't do yet, and I think I've got them trimmed out, but I was gonna put a small waterfall on the inside of this flap. So I'll come back and do that in my next video, but that's all for now. Um, and I'll do that with you. I just don't have it prepared for this video. So thanks for tuning in. This is Daphne saying so long from Scrap and Create. Okay, I'm back. Um, we took a little bit of break and we got most of page three done, but I wanted to come back and add some more features to this page. So. Um, we did already install the swing tab, and uh, that's what's actually holding everything closed. And then we've got a card fold um, space for photos. I fussy cut another one of these buildings out and popped it. So you can see that now. Um, and I think that makes that a little bit more interesting. And then we have this flap on the right-hand side, and then it was open on the inside. So what I've done is I've gone off and created this waterfall and I've trimmed out and inked my pages. And I just have to find my glue. So I'm just still getting a little bit situated here. Here's my glue. Um, so I'm gonna start the waterfall on the top and cascade down. And before I get started, I'll give you the measurements. Each one of these um, is four and a half. Four and a half by three and one eighth. Four and a half by three and one eighth. And you're gonna score a half inch on the four and a half inch side. And these are gonna cascade from the top down. And I got in here without my tape, so I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I got my tape and I've got my um, my little acrylic uh, tool that I use to, to trim my tape. So I'm just gonna get um, a 3 8 inch tape on each one of the waterfalls, and there is a total of four. Three and one eighths by four and a half, three and one eighths by four and a half. And you, you could do more if you wanted, I just stopped at four. I didn't want this flap to get too heavy. actually going to turn this around so that I can see the top of this because I don't like to lean over. Um, I like to bring the edge toward me. Sorry for hitting the stand. My apologies for shaking the room up. Okay. And it's something you might want to think about when you're working uh, in your space as well. I got in here without my pick tool too. I'm just not prepared. So I'm just centering it between um, the score line and the edge of the page, and it's pretty. It, it's going to fit pretty tight, um, and I did that intentionally because I didn't want to have to put a base page down, um, a base mat down. laying that down on top of it just to make sure it's looking straight with the edge
Okay, here's my last one, number four. All right, there's my waterfall. I'm gonna crank it back around because um, I'm going to decide now the order that I wanna lay um, my paper down in. So these two are probably my favorite. So it's a question of this or this, and I think I like this better here. And then, um, oops, I look like I'm missing one. Am I missing one? Huh, I might have I might have uh, shorted myself. I might need to trim one more out. Um, so I know I had two map looking ones, so I want to alternate these. And then I'll probably put this in between. And it does look like I shorted myself, so I'm going to need one more piece here. And then what I was thinking about doing is trimming this down and making this actually a little pocket. And I'm going to stick something in the pocket, and that will hold the, these flaps in place. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and start laying down this paper. In the order that we just did it, and that I just demonstrated. There's some letters on here, so I was just looking at the orientation. Okay, that's one. Here's two. I'm only doing the top side of this waterfall for the moment. Um, I wanna finish my pages and see what scraps I have left over before I do the back sides. I don't really wanna cut into any more of my big paper until the large areas in the, in the book are covered. Because these are so small, I can always use a, a scrap. Okay, and this I'm gonna turn around, and this is actually one of the cut aparts. It says relax on it. that's the beginning of the waterfall so I do need one more piece and I am going to stop for a second I'll be right back once I've trimmed something out okay I'm back I, I did trim something out I had just mislaid it so I located it and now I'm ready to go ahead and put it in and I'm going to show it to you real quick and it is another one of the, the cut aparts it says cancer here so um it is directional just want to make sure I'm putting it in the right direction there it goes Get some glue on it and get it down. Then this waterfall will be complete. Man, I'm just making all kinds, I'm bumping everything, <laughs> making all kinds of extra noise. I don't know what my problem is today. All right, so that is our nice um, four flap simple waterfall, which is again on the inside of this flap. Um, and then this closes the whole thing and holds it in place. And I just wanna make sure it's still staying in place and it is. Okay, so rather than have these things flopping around when I open the flap, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a small pocket here and then I'm gonna insert something in the pocket that will lay against these top four pieces and hold everything in place. So, I got glue on my hand. The, what I was thinking of doing was to pull this, I can't, I'm not sure I'm in frame, is to pull this blue back in over here. So I was thinking of using this um, to make a pocket. And I don't, it can't be too deep because it, it needs to clear these. So do I want a shallow pocket or a deep pocket? Hmm. One of the things I could do is a blue line, two pink lines and a blue line. Actually, it looks like it's gonna be a little too wide. So, hmm. 
Hmm. I'm not crazy about that. Maybe I will find a piece of sailboat and use that instead. So bear with me. I'm going to flip through. I've got lots of scraps here. And I think I might like the sailboats better. And it still brings in that blue for us. There's plenty of cut-aparts in this collection, and that's what a lot of these are, the cut-aparts, which I could also use as a pocket, I guess. I hadn't thought about that. That's too wide. Um, I could repeat the crab pattern. I really think I want to pull in the blue, but I'll leave that there for a second. Let's see if I can't come up with something blue that I like better. I'm pretty sure I've got something. Oh, here they are. Here it is. Here's my sailboats. So this was the other option is to pull in the blue with, and I like that better. So I think I've got two, in fact, here's some. Here is the a piece trimmed out. Hopefully it's wide enough of the narrow, yeah, it is, okay, of the narrow blue, which I like better. So this is actually just a little bit too wide, so I'm gonna shave a sliver off, and that's what we're gonna use for the pocket. Oops, sorry about that. I'm dropping stuff everywhere today. See how that looks. Am I happy? I like it. Okay, so the next thing is it's too long. So I'm going to trim the length. And then, of course, I'll have to come back and um, ink the edges that I just trimmed off. And that looks good. And I do have the ink right here. Somebody was just asking about this um, today. And I'll give you a close look. This is called Powder Puff. It is from a company called Quick Quotes. That's their um, logo right there. We don't sell the powder puffs, but if you go to quickquotes.com, you'll find the powder puffs. They sell um, page layouts and powder puffs and a couple other things, but that's where we get them. And I, they asked about the price and I honestly can't remember. I can tell you that um, once you buy one of these, um, man, they really last a long time. And I, I really like not having to have an applicator. It's, you know, if you find your ink, you're ready to go. You don't have to go find your applicator. Um, so I really, I really highly recommend it. It's a great product. Um, at first, when I started using it, I would... I wanted all the colors, but then I realized um, all I really was doing was using the browns um, to distress the edges, and brown works on everything, so it's nice to just have one color and not have a decision to make there. And again, even though I had all the colors, I wasn't using them. So, All right, so here's our pocket. It's just a nice, simple pocket. And I use glue around the edges. I'm not doing anything real fancy here except to get something large enough. And it might be this. I might square the edges off um, to work as a flap to hold to hold these pieces in place. Okay, and right now I'm just slipping it in gingerly because I'm not sure the glue is dried. But that's how that's going to hold in place. And it's likely I'll come back and... Um, cardstock back this so it's nice and rigid to hold these things in place but you can see where my thought process is going here so that looks nice there and that's just a scrap that I had from somewhere else that will hold this waterfall in place when you're opening and closing it and of course it's sticking out a little but if this was on cardstock or cardstock backed I think it would be rigid enough rigid enough to hold it in place all right so that is um, the end of page two or I'm sorry, page three, page two and three. So we're done. And then I, I had put a rose here and I want to point out that I came back and, and lifted it off. It was a pink rose like this and put it in a flat flower. Um, I think I was getting too much bulk. So 
something you have to consider when you're when you're using large embellishments okay